If you go into a fight thinking it's an exhibition, that's when things start to slip. And that's what Tyson Fury's got to be careful about. Yeah, all these people saying, oh, it's, it's so one-sided, it's going to be this. You can't get into that mindset. Every fight is a new thing. Gotta get this right. This is not an exhibition. No. Francis Ngannou is coming to take Fury's head off. Welcome to the Battle of the Baddest podcast. I'm Gareth A. Davis. Coming up on episode four, we have a jam-packed show for you this week. The young British heavyweight Johnny Fisher joins me in the studio. And I've caught up with Frank Warren, who's telling me about the numbers already involved in Fury versus Ngannou. And I also speak to Joe Joyce about sparring with Francis Ngannou. All that coming up. Welcome back to the Battle of the Baddest podcast. It gives me pleasure, great pleasure, to introduce into the studio my friend and a friend of the show, the one and only, the Romford Bull, Johnny Fisher. 10 and 0, Johnny. Yep. No cast on your hand anymore. No cast. They're looking good. Hand. Well, thanks, first of all, for having me on, Gareth, as always. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, the cast is, it's got, the splint has got to be on and off intermittently now, but trying to not wear it as much anymore and strength and get the range of motion back. So we're looking, hopefully, end of the year, one more fight. 11 and 0? Yeah, that's the plan. Do you know who you're fighting? We've got no no actual plan set in date. Like, we just started talking to Matchroom now, trying to work out what dates work and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. But yeah, everything's uh, up for debate in the minute. Wow, great stuff. Um, I haven't caught up with you since the Fury Naganu press conference yes. in London a couple of Thursdays back. Massive event. Yes. What did you make of Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury on the day? I, Tyson Fury was certainly toying with Ngannou, yeah. was ice cool on the day. Massive event at Outernet. Everyone there. We'll talk about the scrap between Adelaide and yeah. Fabio Wardley in a minute. That's on that card. Joseph Parker against Simon Keane on that card yes. as well. Martin Bacoli. Um, now, who's he facing? Carlos Takam. Carlos Takam. So the heavyweights are lining up. It is a big, <laughs> big heavyweight event. What do you make of the press conference? Um, first of all, I thought Tyson Fury's been there, done that. You could tell he's very comfortable in that stage. Whereas Ngannou, yes, he's fought at the top of UFC, but nothing on this magnitude, I wouldn't say. So, um, yeah, it was. It, you could see the comfortableness, the comfortability of, of Tyson compared to Ngannou. That's the first thing I noticed. But, yeah, I'm, I'm interested because if Tyson does take this lightly, which I don't think he will, but if he does, Ngannou can seriously whack. That's the talk at the moment, yeah. isn't it? That how seriously will Tyson Fury take this? I speak to Frank Warren about this later on. We'll watch that. But the thing is with Tyson, he's very good at playing those mind games. He's yeah. just naturally good at it. Yeah. And he makes you think he that he's he's lulling you into a false yeah. sense of security. And I thought Francis Ngannou didn't play into the game at all. Fran no. Francis wouldn't take his shirt no. off. No. He, he said, no, I'm doing it my way. I sat down with Francis. He was on the podcast. Yeah. Um, and he is going to take this opportunity with both hands. He's convinced he's going to knock Tyson Fury out. Well, he's uh, also being trained by Mike Tyson, isn't he? So they've got that element to it. How much of that is uh, showmanship and how much of that will be actual, he'll have a strategic input. But it's a good man to have in your corner, definitely. So, yes, um, excited to see. And he will because he knows if he if he gets the win here, I know it's a, it's a very, very small chance in a lot of people's eyes. But if he does, then he's on to, ma he's on to massive things. Dangerous early is yeah. what I see him as. I've Very seen, dangerous. I've seen him spar Joe Joyce in um, Las Vegas about four or five years ago. And um, yeah, you could, listen, Joe Joyce is a superior boxer. He's been boxing for ages, but you can, you can, as you said, the first two, three rounds, you can see the power of Ngannou and that's what Tyson's got to be very wary of. That is fantastic that you say that yeah. because I caught up with Joe Joyce and he talked about sparring really? with Francis Ngannou. Here's what he had to say. It was like, because people like Sam Jones, people I know said it was absolutely hammer and tongs, you and him. Yeah, he's a, he hits hard, like he was swinging and he was a little bit open uh, because I think boxing is a little bit more f refined, but him solely focusing on boxing is going to make the difference. And he, once he hits and he lands, he's a very dangerous and very powerful puncher. So... Especially with with him working with Mike Tyson, I'm very interested to see what kind of uh, effect he can have. 
like obviously in his training and in the fight. And if that could come out in the fight, then Tyson Fury's got to be on his A game because the, you don't want to get hit cleanly by Ingano. And that's from that's your takeaway from being in the ring with him for how many rounds? Did did like four rounds. Um, this is like in prepare in preparation for the bar in the first camp when at the end of it then COVID broke out. So uh, yeah, he is he's a good fighter, and I normally see him in the gym. So I normally chat to him in the UFC when he was uh, when he was there. And yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to this fight. I think it's very interesting to see what's going to go down. Very interesting to see what's going to go down. All those things you mentioned there, Joe is reinforcing. Yes. Mike Tyson in his corner. He hits very hard. Apparently those four rounds, they literally just went at it. And Francis is totally focused on boxing now. That might be the game plan for Magano. Give it four or five rounds, just go hammer and tong, throw everything at it. and Because um, he's not going to... Listen, if, if people are not giving him a chance short term, long term over the, the 10 or 12 rounds, he's going to have even less of a chance. So his game plan in my eyes should be to, for four or five rounds, just go and set about Tyson because that's his best chance. Do you think that you mentioned Mike Tyson there, is he going to be enacting that game plan as well? Tyson knows the sport inside out. We've seen some of those amazing clips yeah. with him training yeah. Francis Ngannou, pushing him to the limit, showing him moves can he adopt and adapt to those things? Can a fighter with a with an IQ, obviously, yeah. Naganu's a rough, tough fighter. MMA fighters are. Yeah. Um, will he? Will Mike Tyson be able to help him create those angles which are going to be key against Tyson Fury? Well, from my understanding, working with my trainer Mark Tibbs, he always says you can adapt and you can adopt things, but you can't change what a fighter is and change their style. So you've got to be careful that. You don't change, change what Ngannou is. He's a big puncher. He's not going to have the the skill level of Tyson. But yes, if you can pick up a little five percent here, or six uh, six seven percent there, then that could be something that can then allow him to detonate and set off them bombs. So yeah, he's going to have to use the knowledge of Mike Tyson and try to adopt little bits here and there where he can. Closing the space quickly yes. because the thing is with Fury, we'll hear from Frank Warren in a minute, but he's saying that Frank Warren's saying that. Look at what Tyson is now. He's not someone that is in and out now. He meets yeah. the other guy in the middle. Yeah. So in, in a lot of ways, Fury's going to have to keep Nagano off early. There's no... Obviously, Nagano has to use educated yes. pressure yes. to fight yes. and not be reckless. Yeah. There was a hint there that he leaves himself open a little bit as yeah. well. Yeah. So Fury timing Nagano, countering him maybe, yeah. will be, be the, the Fury strategy. That'll be the strategy from Fury. And as you said, when when Fury fought, uh, fought Vladimir Klitschko in 2015, that was a different fighter to what we see today. Um, obviously, with the style change of Kronk, uh, Sugar Hill, mm. um, that, that's, it, it developed that knockout power. But also at the same, he's probably not as elusive as he once was in terms of the amount of movement he uses but um, yeah that might help him in a sense because it will time him as he comes in if he's a bit reckless and going to with a check hook or that big right hand he's, he's got he can detonate that on on and going the jeopardy involved for Fury here like yeah. the boxing purists the boxing world say he cannot lose to Nagano. No. It, 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 it couldn't Added face pressure. the, the pressure world is, afterwards. Yeah, yeah, the pressure is It is huge, enormous. If there's one man who's got to deal with it, it's Tyson Fury because look what he's gone through with Wilder and fighting Klitschko in his backyard. He's been in high-pressure environments, the highest of pressure, so he's the man who's equipped to do it. I've been in his dressing room. I've had the privilege of being yes. in Tyson's dressing room before three or four fights now. He's got this weird aura just before he fights it's almost like he's in a trance that mm. he seems nerveless yeah i've seen that i've seen that um when when someone's wrapping his hands and the uh vitali klitschko came in to watch him get his hands wrapped and he's just as you said he's just he's so uber relaxed super relaxed so yeah he's got the character for heavyweight boxing for sure well, um, Frank Warren's fighter, Joe Joyce, takes on Zhili Zhang this weekend. He's a rematch. He's got to win it. They've yep. both got to win it. Um, we'll hear from Zhili Zhang in a moment. But how do you see that fight this weekend? Well, um, we saw the first fight, obviously. Um, the eye not holding up for Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce is a great friend of mine. I've, I've sparred him countless times. Mm. And, um, yeah, if we're looking back, he probably wasn't right for that fight. So 
Jili Zhang has got to be ready for a bigger, better Joe Joyce. And we know what Joe Joyce is about. He's big, he's strong, he comes forward. He can take an enormous amount of punishment, just like he did in that fight. And didn't really buckle, he didn't get dropped, but he just, he, the game plan was slightly off. But now with the new tools and the new training camp, I think he'll do what he's, what he's got to do to get him out of there. And even in that one, right, by round six, round seven, I know um, Joe's eye was getting worse and worse, but you could see Zhang was v physically tiring. So the engine of Joe Joyce, a fully fit Joe Joyce, that's going to be the difference. I completely agree. I yeah. think he's got to get through those first five, six rounds, start fast, and then I, I've picked him to get a late stoppage in I this fight, so. rounds 10 or 11. Yeah. Um, but he's got to withstand uh, Zhang. Zhang looks a bit lighter. Yeah. Joyce looks a bit heavier. The other thing Joyce said to me is, if I win this, and obviously he's a Frank Warren fighter, he's with Queensbury. Mm -hmm. um, they have this relationship um, with Saudi Arabia, of course. He'd love to fight over there. So yeah. there's that carrot as well, as well as being oh, big, WBO interim champion if he it's, wins. It's not only the the fury and them them guys that are at the top that he will be then on the on the verge of but that fight with Daniel Dubois is a big fight now as well especially after his performance with Usyk a lot of people giving him credit so yeah that's another big uh, carrot for uh, Joe Joyce to be to be looking at well some people aren't happy about it happening Zhili Zhang feels that he wanted to face Tyson Fury he believes Tyson Fury should have come after him after his victory over Joyce Zhang is a really underestimated fighter yeah. in my view yeah. well I caught up with him this week and here's what he had to tell me with his translator Kurt Tyson Fury is fighting Francis Ngannou in October in Riyadh what's your view about Tyson Fury fighting Francis Ngannou Tyson Fury against Tyson Fury, what do you think about the fight? That's just a show. It's not a real fight. It's just a show. It's not a real fight. I don't really have a view. It's, it's not boxing. It's an exhibition. But if you had that opportunity, would you fight Tyson Fury? Would you take that If you had that opportunity, would you take that opportunity as well? If you have this opportunity, would you take that opportunity? 如果有机会的话, 如果钱到位的话, 干嘛, I like money. If money is there, why not? Do you think you will, if you beat Joe Joyce, will you fight in Saudi Arabia? Maybe. Yeah, probably. Uh, you know, Saudi, like China, like New York, like Las Vegas. Everywhere else, I look at it as equal opportunity. If you win on Saturday night, name me the three boxers, or even four, that you want to fight in your career. I don't really have that because my whole focus is on Joe Joyce. Uh, my team will, will talk about it, but right now it's all Joe Joyce. But if I say, do you want to fight Fury? Do you want to fight Usyk? Do you want to fight Joshua? Do you want to fight Dubois or, or any of these other guys? Is the answer yes? Yes. Yes. And you Yes. 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 You bang everything. Big bang. Thank you, Big Bang. Lovely to see you. Yes, yeah, Ni. Yes, yeah. Huan Ying in London. Yeah. Huan Ying in London. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, bud. Cheers. I don't think it's an exhibition. It's a fight. It's as simple as that. Francis Ngannou, biggest puncher in the world by the Guinness Book of Records. This is a fight. Yes. Um, and Zhang also saying, um, of course I'd take that if I had the opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah, it's okay. I know Zhang, is, I met him, we had a Chinese with him actually uh, before the last fight with Joyce. What a, what a top bloke he is. But yeah, if he was in a position Tyson Fury's in and he could make a few million quid, yeah, he wouldn't be turning that down either. That, like you said though, what people aren't saying is the amount of pressure that's on Tyson Fury yeah. because he has to deliver. Oh, he has to. And... If you go into a fight thinking it's an exhibition 
that's when things start to slip. And that's what Tyson Fury's got to be careful about. Yeah, all these people saying, oh, it's, it's so one-sided, it's going to be this. You can't get into that mindset. Every fight is a new fight. And with someone who's such a big puncher and a dangerous puncher like Ngannou, you cannot take your eye off the ball. One We've second. got to get this right. This is not an exhibition. No. Francis Ngannou is coming to take Fury's head off. You've got to see it like this. When people look back at this in 20, 30 years' time, they're going to see the two meetings of of the world, the battle of the baddest, the top UFC champion and the top uh, boxing champion are going to meet. And there's a lot on the line in, in terms of that. Well, when you put it like that, like you say, in time, people will see a meeting of coming together of two codes of combat sports. Yeah. And I think when people say, oh, it's an exhibition, they just look at the fact that Nagano is coming to boxing for the first time. But, when I spoke to Nagano a couple of weeks ago, he said, I've wanted to be yeah, a boxer yeah. all my life. Most of his focus in training is boxing yeah. training. I've, I've seen it since when I was there for 2018, 2019 in Vegas. He's always been iron up sparring with, with the boxers and that's always been his aim to be in boxing. So yeah, he's got his chance now. So he better take it. Absolutely. Big fight on Saturday night, of course, with Zhang and Joyce. Well, um, Frank Warren was there as well. And uh, he talked to me about the magnitude of this event, the resonance that the press conference in London created and how this fight is causing waves. And it really is a game changer. Here's Frank Warren. To, to see, see you, huge, huge event, event at the, the weekend. weekend. Uh, Gili Zhang against Joe Joyce too. Big night for Joe Joyce. In fact, big night for Zhang as well. It's a big night for both of them. There's so much at stake. It's for the uh, WBO interim title. Obviously, it's a rematch, and uh, Gilles the uh, champion. But the winner of this fight will be the WBO's mandatory challenger. The WBO next year will be ordering whoever holds their belt to defend it against the winner. So that's what's at stake. So the winner's going to have a chance to to get that pot of gold, to get that chance of fighting for the big title for the world title. And the loser's going to have to sit there and probably wait for two years before he gets his opportunity because there will hopefully be a, and I hope there will be, a unification. I'm hoping, and then the, the respective bodies will order their various uh, mandatories, We've got the IBF, WBO. So that's going to push everyone back before any voluntary defences until 2025. So for Joe, he can't afford to do that. Nor, nor can Jang, by the way, but he certainly can't afford to do that. So this is going to be, this is a crucial fight for two guys who are top-class heavyweights. And the last fight was, you know, was, I thought, was, I thought Zhang was brilliant in it. Joe has got, it's, it's all about, can Joe do anything different? It's five months later, he's got eyes healed. Can he change what he did last time? That is what this fight's going to be all about. Tyson Fury is the number one in the world. People will argue, I think Deontay Wilder's the number two, and I think um, Alexander Usyk is the number three. I exposed, think while He was exposed by, by Daniel. Well, that's just my, you know, we all have our views on it. Um, arguably, is the winner of this maybe number four in the world, even above Anthony Joshua? The most important thing is not whether, where you are in the ratings, it's what you've got, and what you've got is the interim title... Yeah. And you are the mandatory. That is more important than being number one, two, four, 58. That is most important because that's what the organisation will do. They'll say, right, you have now got to defend your title against the interim champion. If Joe wins this, what are the chances of him fighting in Saudi Arabia at some point in the next year, year and a half? Big chance of that. There's a big, big chance of that. But we'll see what happens. Um, Joe's got to make adjustments, presumably, in your view. Yeah, he can't do what he did last time, and uh, he knows that better than anybody. He's not stupid. And it's can he make the adjustments? Um, it's, I think it's really intriguing, this. But one thing's for sure, you know, he doesn't leave anything, does he? And, you know, he doesn't leave anything outside the ring. He'll, he'll throw everything he can at, at this fight, for this challenge. And I'm confident, one thing I am confident, is this to be a great fight. What a, what a few months for heavyweight boxing and for you as well. Joyce um, and Zhang, uh, Dubois, obviously under appeal with the WBA with U6, still ongoing at the moment. And obviously on October the 28th, the battle of the baddest, it's being called. You said game changer and we've seen why. Well, 
you use it at a press conference and you see, I mean, I've never been to a press conference like that and it's going to get, it's going to get bigger and bigger. Since we had the press conference last, was it last Thursday? Thursday before, yeah. Yeah, th sorry, Thursday before. Over the course of four or five days, just Queensbury and I think it's ESPN had over 180 million views. Just them. That's how big it is. That's how big this event is. It's huge. And everybody will be tuning into it and they're going to be, you know, and it's going to be intriguing, really, because people just write this off, you know, Zhang's, oh, sorry, Zhang, uh, Nagano's got no chance. That's mm. I don't agree with that. Mm. I've, I've looked, I've never been a, into UFC or been a fan of it, but I've looked at quite a few of, the, uh, of his fights now. And all I know is that he's rough, he's tough, he can whack, he's a big puncher. So what can he do? Is he going to be able to outbox Tyson Fury? I doubt it. So when he gets in that ring with Tyson, he's going to try and put Tyson out of his stride. He's going to try and bully him. He's going to try and rough him up to land his bombs. Because that's, for me, the only way he can win the fight. And everybody thinks Tyson's going to be up on his toes, dancing away. Tyson's last four or five fights, he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with everybody. The biggest punching heavyweight out there who stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with and out-punched him. This is, why it last, it's going to be an absolute shooter, why it last. The enormity of what's going on there, the investment in it, seems extraordinary as well. It's a massive investment in it, and, it's an invest, and that's what it is, an investment for the future. That's what it is. You know, this is going to be the start of something really big, no doubt about that. Were you surprised when it first happened that it all came about? And obviously there's, there's different groups in Saudi Arabia, but you seem to be in with the people who control it all over there. When it all sort of came to light, there was a bit of doubt because there was doubt about previously what happened with Tyson when we agreed to a fight last October with with um, Usyk and it didn't happen, and then it was going to be, you know, this year, and twice it was put back. So it did. So there was a bit of reservation about it. But at the end of the day, you know, His Excellency and his team. I mean, it took that step up. I mean, I didn't step up. I mean, I absolutely jumped up and did it and made it happen. And, you know, this is the real deal. Is there a danger? It's, it's opening Riyadh season. Yeah. It's a huge global event. Yeah. Huge global event. The way I've described it sometimes is like if imagine a heavyweight boxing match opening Glastonbury or opening the Cannes Film Festival and several other festivals around the world and putting them all together. Correct. You Correct. Know? And that's what it is. And I just genuinely feel I know it's going to be a, mag, a mega event and I know that it's going to, going to get a lot of people are going to tune in and watch it. And hopefully our man comes through and then we can look and see. Uh, how the line, land lies and Tyson can make some serious decisions. Uh, is there any danger because Tyson is being called such a big favourite and it's Francis Ngannou, even though he's a battler and a fighter, his first boxing match, is there any danger psychologically in your view of him not taking him as serious as he could? No, Tyson's no fool. I mean, he's a consummate professional. He trains very hard. We've all seen that for years. Listen, he's not cut out of marble. He doesn't look like... Um, Anthony Joshua or Daniel Dubois, that's not how he is. But he's more athletic, he's more durable, he's a bigger puncher, he's got a better chin. So, you know, and, and, and he spends his time in the gym all the time. He's training, training, training. And if he does come through, are you hoping that we will see Tyson Fury in an undisputed fight uh, in the end, at the end of the Riyadh season? That's what people seem to be suggesting. Me personally, I'd love to see that. Yeah. For me, of course I want to see that. I'm a boxing nut. I want to see that. Um, the card's developing out there very well as well. Is Fabio Wardley and David Adelaide, your guy, still going ahead on that card? Do we know yet? The fight will be on that card. But we don't know about the British title yet? Not yet, no. And, and all these other heavyweight fights on the card There's as well? Some good fights on there, and obviously uh, some more to be announced. Could it potentially be the biggest event you've ever been involved in? I said that from the beginning. It will be. As far as the amount of people who watch it, as far as the, and remember, I, I was in, you know, Don King and I did Bruno, uh, Mike Tyson too. I mean, I've been involved in a lot of shows over the years and big, big events. This is going to be the biggest. I mean, more eyeballs on this than any show I've been involved with. Yeah. Up to now, more people have seen the press conference than probably the last 10 press conferences we put on combined. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, sir.
fascinating stuff there from Frank Warren. Um, the biggest event he's ever been involved in. He talked about this being a game changer. Um, a lot of things to, to mull over there, Johnny. Yeah. Um, first thing, David Adelaide and Fabio Wardley, as a young British heavyweight yourself, it's great that these yeah. two guys are getting it on there. I don't think the British title's on the line at the moment. I think that's still under discussion, but they're having the fight. It's effectively for it anyway. Yeah. Wa uh, Wardley is the current British champion. Yes. Shenanigans at the press conference. Yes. Um, what did you make of that? It's just uh, it was a bit it was a bit odd, a bit strange, and um, I know Fabio very well. Spot countless rounds with him, and um, it looked like he stumbled a little bit, and that hook came in from from the guy. But yeah, it's just it, it wasn't it wasn't the best look. But I think that would just spur Fabio on now. I know what sort of character Fabio is, um, very 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 driven individual, and um, he'll be looking to get one back. But it won't let him deter him more from his game plan. He's the sort of guy that's happened. He'll put it to the back of his mind, and it, he'll get on with it. Do you believe Wardley wins that fight against Adelaide? It's a very difficult pick for me because Adelaide has really improved, really believes in himself, yeah. but Wardley's got something special. Adelaide's well. a, a good crisp puncher and good good uh, fundamentals, but I think Wardley's just got something special about him. I think that he, he can go on to, to world level and, and he could even become a world champion. He's just got that, that doggishness and that doggedness. He can... He can really dig deep when he needs to, and I think that's a really, really key ingredient for a heavyweight boxer. So, yeah, I'm backing Wardley. Four heavyweight fights on the card already. Jack McGann, um, I believe, is fighting Roberto Duran Jr. Yeah. as well on the card. Yeah. Jack McGann, an MMA fighter yeah, him, yeah. who's coming into boxing um, and looks terrific as yeah. a fighter. Um, it's all hotting up, isn't it? It is. It is. That's, it's exciting. Um, this, as you said, it's the opening of uh, Riyadh season as well. So it's a, it's a big global event and the eyes on this event are going to be huge and a lot of heavyweight contests on this card as well, which I'm looking forward to. Do you think you'll be going over to the Middle East? Have you dreamt that you're going to be over in the Middle East at some point fighting? It's not something that I think in my head, oh, that's where I really want to go and fight. For me, it's Vegas, New York, something like that. But, but it's, there, there's a shift, isn't there? There is a shift. There is a there is a shift that is now become trying to become the the epicenter of. Oh, I think it will. Not just boxing, but sport in general. Yes, what we can see. And yeah, listen, I'm not I'm not uh, opposed to fighting anywhere. Um, my job is to be a boxer, and if the if the uh, the offer comes, if the offer comes, and and the uh, that's where the land lies. I have to go and do that. So yeah, I have to think about my monetary position. I have to think about where the promoters are going, where the networks are going, and uh, yeah, I've got to do my job, which is to fight. Back to Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. Finally, um, Frank Warren saying there, Tyson's no fool. He won't underestimate Ngannou. No, he can't. He can't afford to. Um, can't afford to underestimate someone as rough and tough as Francis Ngannou. And we was talking earlier on about sometimes when you're expected to win, that can be where you, you can dip a little bit or that can be... Does it play on your mind then? Do, can that get into your head? I always think, like my last, just from my perspective, for my last fight, my first title fight, I was more heightened. My, 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 my concentration was higher. My everything was a little bit sharper because I knew this was going to be a toughest test. This is going to have... This was the Southern Area title. Yeah, it is. Your first a, title. Nothing compared to what these guys are doing, but for me, the biggest step in my career so far. So when the stakes are a little bit higher and you've got to pull it out of the bag, it makes you perform a little bit better. So if you know you're going into a fight where not many people are rating the other guy's chance mm. or you've got boxing pundits saying there's no chance there, that's when you can slip. And that makes this fight that little bit more interesting because... As a heavyweight, you can't afford to ever do that because anyone at any time over 14 stone four can do some serious damage. That's why I think this fight is different to that crossover fight with Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. Yeah. Because that was at round welterweight, wasn't it? Yeah. So one punch in the heavyweight division, a jab even sometimes, yeah. Yeah. can really change things. That's why there's more jeopardy here. Of course. That's why we watch heavyweight boxing. That's why we want to see the big guys. It's slightly, Lennox Lewis said it, you've got, Boxing to a cruiserweight and then heavyweights is slightly different rules. There's slightly different parameters and that's what makes it so exciting. And that's why this fight is going to be intriguing. And people might be talking about it in different ways, saying positive and negative things, but I guarantee you everyone will be tuning in to watch. At the beginning of this podcast, I asked a couple of people, Ben Davis and Julius Francis. Julius Francis fought Mike Tyson, of course, back yep. in 2000. Yep. A couple of poses. I'm going to ask you a couple of poses to finish today. Okay. Prime Mike Tyson versus a prime Tyson Fury. Who wins and why? Prime Mike Tyson versus prime Tyson Fury. 
I'm having to think about this one. I think might the the Tyson Fury that beat Deontay Wilder in the third fight, in the second fight, in the second fight. I think he gives he'd be a favourite against most people from from all eras, but. I can't, I can't pick this one, Gareth, because I remember watching when I was a young kid on YouTube all the clips of Mike Tyson coming up as a twenty-year-old, destroying people. This is—I don't normally do this, but I'm gonna have to sit on the fence on that one. Okay, pick it. Have you seen many clips of Muhammad Ali fighting? Yep. A prime Mike Tyson against a prime Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is the icon of the sport, but for me, Mike Tyson. Wow, that's interesting. And this one. A prime Lennox Lewis against a prime Tyson Fury. Oh. <laughs> it's odious, isn't it, the comparison? The two of my heroes, and it's like I'm disrespecting one by saying the other. But um, You've got to sit on the fence again, then. I'm going to say, no, I'm going to say Lennox Lewis because he was partly because he's the, the last undisputed champion we've had. And maybe when Tyson Fury beats Usyk, which I think he will, my opinion will change. But until then, I've got to give the respect to Lennox Lewis. And what are you picking for Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou on October the 28th that opens the Riyadh season? I think it's going to be an exciting start. I think the first two, three rounds, Fury's going to be under a lot of pressure, but eventually we'll find the knockout round five, six onwards. Wow, round five or six onwards. Johnny Fisher, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Thank Battle you of the Baddest podcast. I appreciate it, mate. I'll see you soon. See you soon. Cheers. My thanks to Johnny Fisher for joining me on this week's Battle of the Baddest podcast. And thanks also to Frank Warren, Joe Joyce and Gili Zhang. We'll see you next week.